Today, I want to make a special offering to the sweet and sensitive devotees. And also, I want to apologize to any of those sweet and sensitive devotees. So I, I want to apologize in general. Because sometimes you just don't have enough time to attend all these sensitive devotees <coughs> in such a sensitive way as they require, as they need. And this is a trial. This is a kind of a test we all go through. Because it's just the nature of things. Like I cannot be so much in one city. Or I don't have so much time to speak to you or to you or to you. And maybe even you feel a little bit neglected. Oh, why is not giving more time to me? In South America, we have a saying. It says, if you don't cry, you don't get anything to eat. So we have to cry sometimes when we feel that we need some special food. So, it's old baby wisdom. So, but the sensitive devotees and the emotions, the sensitive emotions of everyone, they are actually very valuable. They're not bad. But what does it mean? What are they for? This morning I had a long conversation with Harijan and Swami Maharaj. And we discussed the need of taking care of children. That everybody has such a mother power inside. And some, some people have father power as well. So we got the mother power and we got the father power. We got the mother love and the father love. Then the question arises, who gets that? Who gets your father power and your mother power? Somebody must get it. It's a big power, and it's very much connected with our sensitivity. Why? Because usually we are very sensitive with ourselves, but not always very sensitive with the feelings of others. Sometimes we are not, and sometimes we ignore the sentiments of others how they feel, what's going on inside of them. You know, everybody has this nice face, nose, mouth, ears, hair, arms, legs. But something is going on inside. What's going on inside of you? That's what Krishna cares about. Because Krishna is inside. And Krishna is also inside of himself. Therefore Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, for one who sees me everywhere, sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. That's a love declaration number one. Hey, nobody ever in the world will give you that love declaration. 
And if they do, they lie. <laughs> Nobody can say, can you please see everything in the world connected to me? Come on. Huh? Can you please see me everywhere? <laughs> Come on. Come down. Cool down, no? Huh? Then, I'm always in your heart. Nobody can say that except Krishna. And you will never be lost to me. Well, again, only Krishna can say that. So Krishna is making in the Bhagavad Gita the absolute universal love declaration. So the sensitivity and the mother and father power and that what is going on inside of each and every one of you. This is very high and very, very valuable. It is a treasure. There's no price to it. How much money you have to pay to a mother that she will sell her child to you? Can you imagine, imagine Mother Lakshmi? Somebody wants to buy a child of her? Hmm? She'll become like a hurricane or something, you know? Huh? Like an earthquake, but not sell her child. Even if you come to her and you bring a mountain of gold, a mountain, nobody has a mountain of gold, but even if you go and take a mountain of gold to a mother, says, I give you this, you give me your child. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You got her wrong. So, how much value is there in an individual? Your mother would not have sold you either, that's what I'm saying. So you would not sell the ones who are under your care. So a mother power <coughs> is bigger than all the bankers in the world together. All the mining billionaires, all those <coughs> petrol pumping millionaires, all these all these military spending billions of dollars for stupid arms. They are nothing against the love of one month. <laughs> Is that right or am I crazy? You tell me. Is that true what I'm saying? Or is this just some delirium? I want to know this. It's true, it's true. It's true. If you agree with this, then lift your arm if you think this is true. <laughs> Two arms. <laughs> wow. It sounds like it's true. Because I don't bribe you for saying yes. I don't pay anything. You and you could easily object. So if an individual in a relationship, I'm giving you the example of a mother and her child. Wait a second, is that all? Would you sell your brother? Would anybody sell his brother for any amount of money? I know there are some cases where people are so disturbed and create some environment where where they do wrong things but any sane person would not sell his brother for anything and selling your mother <coughs> for a billion dollars billion for a billion mountains of gold would you sell your mother it's impossible so you cannot sell your child, you cannot sell your brother, you cannot sell your mother. And who can you sell? 
is very strange when you think that our European ancestors, they had a slave trade, you know? Oh, what a shame. Slave trading. <laughs> Selling one human being to another person and basically that other person can do with the slave whatever they want. <laughs> Unthinkable. And these, these guys call themselves Christians. <laughs> you have to say, wait, wait a second, how did you come up with that idea? My point is the motherly feeling and the fatherly feeling, <coughs> those intense sensitivity which we all have inside. My point is that this love potency which you have inside, which vibrate. This is for giving love, not for receiving love. Yes, we also like to receive love, no doubt. We love it that somebody looks at us and tells us, I'm missing you. Hmm? <laughs> huh? You are missing me? You want to sell me something? Or, <laughs> or what is that? No, no, I don't want to sell you anything. I just want to tell you. I'm missing you when you're not here. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? It makes your heart like... Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are so happy when we come somewhere and the dog comes running and he wags the tail. <laughs> Huh? And the dog does that with you, it doesn't do it with somebody else. What a nice dog. Huh? What a kind dog. Hmm? It must really love me. Huh? I must really be special, eh? am I not? <laughs> So we appreciate the love of a dog as well. Come on. A dog. Maybe just dog is only happy because you're giving good food. And the dog remembers. This guy opens the fridge, takes out something and gives me something to eat. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he sees that person, he sees the fridge. My fridge has come. <laughs> so, but you don't know who can understand the dog's heart. But one thing is for sure, the dogs recognize people and they like some and others they don't like. Animals are much more sensitive than you think. Anyhow, the animals. And if we are not careful, we'll be animals again. For whatever karma it may means to become an animal. So this beautiful, sensitive insight of yours, which is very hard to explain, what is it looking like, your sensitive inside? Is it a, is it a flower? Is this a vibrating flower? You know, in Colombia we have one flower or one, one vine. If you touch it, it immediately shrinks. No? Very sensitive. Huh? So, what does it look inside of you, this feeling being, <coughs> that sensitive soul, which simultaneously vibrates into all directions, just like my heart, is right now having a relationship with each one of you. Not only with one, because I just look around, I see the faces, I see all oh, oh. Manda is also here. Ooh, the heart is like a 
it is it's the most sensitive of all organs which is there. It's the love organ. It is the caring organ. organ. It is the friendship organ. It is the filial or paternal organ. It is also the conjugal or, organ. It is, it is, is, is really the, that where bhakti lives. It lives in this, and in this sensitive organ, in the heart of it, is Krishna. So you can close Krishna in your heart. For one who sees me everywhere, sees everything in me. I'm in their heart, and they're in my heart. Krishna says. So, so you're in Krishna's heart, and Krishna is in your heart. And right around that is your most sensitive of all your neurons. There's neurons in the heart recently discovered. Huh? People didn't know that. They thought neurons were only in the brain. But actually there's neurons in the, in the brain, neurons in the belly, and neurons in the heart. That's why they say love goes to the belly. <laughs> you're cooking rich, happy, and you're giving with love some food, the person becomes very attached to you. Says, oh, you're so nice. You looked after my belly. You looked after my heart. This is more deep than intellectual appreciation. This is very deep. So, this beautiful lotus flower, or whatever you may look, this vibrating star in your heart, which is continuously receiving and sending, receiving and sending, just like the eye. The eye is continuously receiving messages. Because if you lift up the hand, it's immediate. I register it immediately, you know? Like, like all of you, you lifted up your hands just for mother, for mother's love, no? So I immediately registered it. Quickly, quickly, my inner consciousness was aware. Oh yes, Nitya Sambanda also lifted her hands like this. Boom, 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 boom. It goes so fast. The capacity of the the eye, the the vision, is just super powerful. Simultaneously assimilating. You know, the brain and the heart, it leaves every computer in the back like some little dinky machine, you know? Even though we can be impressed by how many functions, mathematical calculations a computer can uh, execute within a fraction of time, but your eye, your heart, is millions of times more powerful. <laughs> this is the this is the potential and that's what we are talking about like I'm talking about this fa faculty this beauty inside of you because it's also inside of me it's something it's going on it's continuously and that's why we follow the Bhagavad Gita because the Bhagavad Gita is giving us that knowledge of the inner, we are, like, like we don't, we, we don't have a, ba a Vaishnava beauty parlor. Hmm? I mean, no need, no need because the Vaishnavis, they are already beautiful, uh, they are always beautiful, just, and man, there's nothing they can do about their being ugly, even there's no beauty parlor who can help them. So don't waste time with that. Huh? Just shave your head and chant Hare Krishna and tolerate the rest, you know. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's kind of, Krishna has this funny way of doing things, no? And, and the female, they just they put their hair nicely and put their sari in, and they look beautiful. Hmm? <laughs> they can't do anything about it. They look beautiful. So, so Krishna has made his, his, his jokes with us, no? So, in this way, uh, Vaishnavas don't have a beauty parlor. Of course, sometimes they have a festival and they're painting 
paint themselves a little bit up and things like that, but for Vaishnavas the beauty is a different thing. Hmm? We don't worship our hair. We just wash it <laughs> and arrange it. We don't worship our, uh, our physical appearance. Like, so we, I don't think Vaishnavas are a good business for these plastic surgeries. Surgery. I don't think Vaishnavas care for that, you know? And as a matter of fact, we, we, we feel very sad for this, and people want to change their looks and forget what they are sold like that. Anyhow, so this beautiful living being is so sensitive and wants to be looked after and wants to be taken care of. That is this loving heart, yes? So what can you do? Wait that somebody comes and take you, oh yeah, you are my heart, you are my heart, you are my heart. Mm. Mm. Doesn't it really happen that way? Sometimes you meet somebody who tells you, mm, you are so special for me. You are so special, so you are so unique for me. Oh yes. The day I see you, the moment I see you, everything is blissed out for me. Mm, okay. Sounds good. But the giving is always there. The receiving is not always there. The receiving is rarely there. And the receiving is rarely and difficultly sustained. It's a question of sustaining an emotion, you know? <laughs> How long can you sustain the emotion? That is the big question. Questions, questions on my mind. Where will I find the answer? These emotions are the ones who are you are supposed to give to suffer. That is why it is my job to convince you to accept responsibility for the joyful feelings of others. Then you can give all your love in this direction. Yes, we also get love Wait a second. Prabhupada has given us so much love. Sri Ramach has given us so much love. Paramatma is giving us non-stop love. Mother Nature is giving us non-stop love. And then there's a few extra people that also give us love. Our Guru, our Shiksha Gurus, they give us love as well. So it's not that we don't get anything, please. But because we are so love-hungry people, therefore we always feel it's not enough. And when we are a little bit in Maya, we think, mm, maybe somebody else is getting more than me. And we become jealous of that. Say, why this person or that person gets more attention and not me? This is not so good. It is just we are learning here. We are learning. We are preparing here for the eternal love relationship. We are preparing and getting rid of all the <coughs> negative influences by the grace of Sri Hari. This is the exercise of spiritual responsibility. If you don't have people under your care, you're missing something. <coughs> Therefore, Sometimes, if there's nobody, you have to go out and preach and find somebody. 
What does it mean a new devotee? I always say, new devotee means new trouble, new problems. A new child means new pains, new worries, new difficulties, new diseases, everything. How many parents have had a child die? I just got a letter yesterday of a woman. She was happy to have a son. The son was already five or six months in the womb. And all of a sudden, for no reason, simply his heart stopped beating. So all her feeling of being mother again, all her joy, the son is coming. She had to take some kind of operation to get the, the death child out from the stomach. So, you don't know. <laughs> This Krishna's giving everything. So if you get a new child, that means a big problem is coming to you. If you make a new bhakta, that means a new a big problem is coming to you. If you say somebody, you know this is my house, you can come here every week once for bhakta bhakti yoga program, then he's becoming your child. And you have to look after him, then he, if he or she comes every week, you got another kid. And you got to make sure that kid gets initiated. And you got to make sure that kid gets com committed to devotional service. It's a, it's a chain reaction. <coughs> what I do to you, you shall do to others. I give Krishna to you, so you give Krishna to others. I take care of you, so you start taking care of others. I mean, otherwise my life would be useless. Because if you look at it carefully, you could say, Hey, Paramatreti, you're not taking care of anybody. You're five minutes with this, five minutes with that. One little letter here, one little letter there, and then you run away. So forget it, my dear. You are not taking care of anybody, really. Not like a father. Get the food, get the clothes, get the schooling, get everything. Take your child in the arm, look up. You know, father and mother job is full, full, full time job. Somebody may say that. It's a sannyasi, you know, really take me responsibility. But the reason that I do this, and Guru Deva Tulananda also, is because we are training you to get your love, to get your love from your giving it to others. That's a mantra. We are training you to get your love from giving your love to others. That's the formula of Krishna Consciousness. It is a chain reaction. <coughs> Some guy made a movie. The teacher said, you should all <coughs> give some suggestions and some practical exercise how to make this world a better place. I'm sure many of you have seen that movie. So one little kid says, yes, I should do a favor to three people who are, who are not related to me and who do not expect any favor from me. And when they ask me, why did you do that? Then you tell them, I did do this so that you also will do that to three others. And when they ask you, why did you do that? You tell them again that you also do this to three others. So it was Cadena uh, de Favores. I think the movie was called in Spanish. So, so the kid actually started doing this. And it became like a, a wonderful chain that many people were benefited and, and actually 
this little kid made a big difference. But my Guru Deva Srila Prabhupada, he told me and his disciples that you make favors to others who don't know you and you don't know them previously. You make favors to others every day to as many people as you can. And if they ask you, why you do this? Then you tell them, so that you will also do it. What? Me? Yes. That's why I give this favor to you. That's why I give this book to you. This is why I give my love to you. This is why I give you prasadam. This is why I invite you to bring down. This is why is this, 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 it's all about this. Give your love, give your love, give your love. Give your love away, don't be afraid. Like MC Yogi song, maybe you have seen that song. Give love, give your love away. Hmm? And if you give your love away, then it will flourish. This is my understanding of the Bhagavad Gita. This is Prabhupada, he told us not to make three favors to three people who you do not know. No. He said, make every day favors all the day to everyone you meet without any expectation of anything in return from them. <coughs> Is this true or not? Is that what Prabhupada teaches us? It's even a mantra. Sarve shukenu bhavantu, sarve shantu niramaya, sarve badrani pashyantu, ma kachitu kabhagbhave. This mantra of the Vedas, it says that everybody should be happy. Sarve shukenu bhavantu. Bhavantu comes from bhava, from the feeling. Everybody who should have the happy feelings of love. Nobody should be diseased and sick and suffering. And everybody should have a clear understanding of what's right and what's wrong. They should have the, the, the proper attitude. Nobody should suffer. This is our desire. This is our duty. That's what we work for. So this is what Prabhupada taught us, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. So we simply, we simply hope, you know, we simply hope that, uh, that everybody picks up on it, picks up on the efforts to make others happy. Sometimes you make somebody happy just by touching his head. And he wakes up also. Mm -hmm. Somebody you make somebody happy, you said, you want a sweet ball? Sorry, it's a courtesy. <laughs> somebody you make, uh, sometimes you make somebody happy when you say, listen, my dear Nidya, you're looking a little sad. Do you have anything you'd like to tell me? Please reveal your mind. Oh. You mean I can speak to you? I, sp I can speak my heart? You are going to listen to me? Some people say, I don't come to you because I don't want to bother you, but I really like to bother you. <laughs> so I say, if you don't bother me, then what is my service? I do not feel bothered when people come to tell me their hearts demands and needs, I do not feel bothered. It's my life, my service. Doctor of the soul, master of the mind, your precious benediction is very hard to find. You make it very easy for all to understand. Your mercy knows no boundary, your kindness has no end. So this is my my favorite understanding of Doctor of the Soul. 
You have to be there for everybody all the time. If I talk to you and we are, we are chatting and then I see somebody in the back of his face, I'm like, oh. say, wait a second. But sometimes you don't see that person. Sometimes you don't notice how many people are in dire need. So, therefore Rupa Goswami has taught us in his Upanishamri, Dadati Prati Grinati Yamakyati Prichati Bhute Bhochayati Chaivata Priti Viti Lakshanam Six Love Exchanges Six Somebody comes to me, oh look I brought this Toron some 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 sweet from South America. Would you like to have one? Mm -hmm. You brought it all the way from South America, just you can give me a little piece of it. Oh, my God. Or somebody comes, I just cooked this for you. This is very good. Very medicine. <laughs> like that. So I cooked this for you. Will you accept it? So intimate. This is Rupa Goswami says. He says, we make our life meaningful by six types of loving exchanges. And both of them are giving, receiving, giving, receiving. No? But the big devotees, they don't care about receiving. They just care about giving. Because when they do giving, 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 their heart is just blossoming. Blossoming in beauty, in sweetness, and love. Jaya Prabhupada, the biggest giver of love. He was such a professional love giver. You know, I will tell you something. I will make you a confession. Please don't think bad about me after that. <laughs> Prabhupada, he gave his love everywhere. I go to South America and to some places where the people are really loving and so wonderful. And I can speak their language. But Prabhupada, he went to Pakistan. He went to Saudi Arabia. He went to Iran. He went to so many places. He was kicked out from Venezuela by <coughs> one envious father of a devotee. Prabhupada went to Venezuela in the airport. They told him, no. <coughs> we have your list. You're not allowed in this country. What a shame. Prabhupada went everywhere where he couldn't speak the language, where he could nothing, but Prabhupada would give, 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 and send his devotees everywhere. <coughs> From that point of view, I feel that we are doing absolutely hardly anything. Hardly anything. As a matter of fact, I don't like to initiate people when I don't speak their language. I feel then I cannot give them any instruction. I cannot, I cannot relate to them very deeply inside. <coughs> like that. Of course, it's a different story because nowadays Krishna has his representatives all over the world and they, they're doing so much. But I just feel that. Prabhupada was the love giver without comparison. Everywhere he went, everywhere he sent his devotees, and everywhere he spent money for the welfare of others. Amazing. Srila Prabhupada is totally <coughs> amazing love phenomena. And I I'm so happy to meet him, and I'm so happy to meet you. 
And I just wanted to say these things about the inner feeling and sensitivity this morning. Because when I'm running around with a hundred people, more than a hundred people, 150 people, it's very difficult to give everybody the love they need. It's, you cannot handle it. Or at least you cannot handle it equally with everybody. Of course, this is our training ground for Prativiti Achiyati Nankaradigram Sarvita Prachara Hoi Bimodana.